Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? I hope your day's been fantastic. Hey, look, it's Lisa here from TMXing Adventures. A lot of you guys know me, you're watching on my page or my YouTube. Um, there's a lot going on in my kitchen this afternoon, so I thought I'd share it with you because I told you I'd be making shepherd's pie and showing you the most amazing mashed potatoes. So I will do that. We've got mashed potatoes happening over here at the moment in this thermo mix. So I've actually done a little bit different with the mashed potatoes than the original recipe. The recipe that my that is my favorite, and I'll put it in the comments later, is actually the recipe that is the mashed potatoes for two from Cookie Do. It is the most amazing, light, fluffy, foolproof uh, potatoes you'll ever find. But they are not going to be enough for my shepherd's pie. Now, uh, with that in mind, I have made a bigger batch. So I have done 800 grams of potatoes. Um, and what I've actually done is I've put them in and I've used the, the new peeler blade cover to peel them. And now I'm doing a bit of an experiment that I've not done before where I'm actually boiling the potatoes in here with the peeler blade cover. So it normally says in the recipe, first thing you do is you, you grate some parmesan, put it aside. Then it tells you to uh, put peeled potatoes into the Thermomix. I think there's actually a blade cover one as well, a peeler blade cover one. But anyway, you're supposed to then peel them and then steam them in the simmering basket. But when you've got 800 grams of potatoes, you can't fit them in a simmering basket. But what you can do is use your blade cover to extend your capacity. So I've put the peeler blade cover in the bottom. I then put the brand new clean water on top and I'm boiling them for the 20 minutes instead of putting them in the simmering basket and boiling them in there. So that's happening over here in this Thermomix. Hello Faye, thanks for saying hi. Lovely to have you on this afternoon. How's Tazzy today? Um, this Thermi has my massive mince cook up. So in here, have a look on the, the week before last. I did this, guy, this, this for you guys two weeks ago and it's got in here onion, garlic, carrot, zucchini and capsicum. Up here it's got a kilo of mince, um, about 700 grams of tomato puree this time, um, some veggie stock and some tomato paste. So this is gonna take about 45 minutes to steam. Okay, and then that's steaming, this is boiling, and then I combine it together. So that's gonna become the base of my shepherd's pie. We don't do peas and corn here, the kids won't eat it, so that's the base. Um, and over here, this will be the fluffy mashed potatoes if these cook in time. So the trick to fluffy mashed potatoes, and the reason often they fail, is because they're actually not cooked through, or they are the wrong type of potatoes. If you get ones that are starchy, they will stay like clag glue when you whip them up. So I don't know if you've ever served clag glue mashed potatoes, but it's exactly as it sounds. Not too great. So normally two things, as I said, wrong type of potatoes, they need to be floury potatoes, or they didn't get cooked through, which means that starch inside is going to turn into a gluggy mess, the starch that's not broken up. So I've just used whitewashed potatoes. They're a general purpose potato and I suspect they'll be fine. The other things that go into this beautiful mashed potato recipe, hey Karen, lovely to have you on. Hey Kalinda, is I've got a couple of ingredients hiding over here. So in the background the last few weeks, I've actually been putting together a cheese course. Now it's going to eventually be $49 to do the cheese course, but it is um, eight videos teaching you how to make amazing cheeses, one of which is cultured butter in your Thermomix. So um, this is going into today's, I've got quite a, quite a bit of this from doing those recordings. So I'm gonna put some, but normally the recipe for mashed potato calls for butter, I'll be putting in cultured butter, and it calls for some milk. And of course, when you're doing cheese making, what have you got lots of left? Whey. So I'm gonna be, um, this is the whey from the halloumi. So I'm going to be putting that in instead of milk. So that just lifts the protein content of the mashed potato considerably. So they are going in instead of the standard ingredients. Um, anyone made halloumi? I know some of you guys were fortunate enough through COVID to actually make halloumi in your, with me on some cook-alongs and stuff. But if you have, put it in the chat. Uh, lots of fun and you just feel like you've really achieved something great when you've made your own cheeses. Now, with that note of making sure your potatoes are cooked through well, 
Uh, I'm not going to try and hurry this process as much as I really want to. I'm not actually going to mash these until they're well cooked because I do not want glue on top of my shepherd's pie. Um, I've got to say, shepherd's pie, this is probably the second time I've ever made it uh, because it's just something that, I don't know, I feel like I had lots of it as a child. That's my childhood memory of shepherd's pie. And so we just don't do it often. And H hubby's not a huge fan of mince as much as the kids love it. So I'm curious to see if my kids will eat mashed potato because I don't think they've ever had mashed potato. So there we go. <laughs> they'll eat uh, wet, like steamed homemade chippies and they'll do those sorts of roast veggies. But I just don't know if mashed potato is their thing. But I guess I'm about to find out tonight. I'm just stabbing these to see if they come off. Now let me just show you what's going on in here. There they are. And you can see the, the beautiful silver blade cover. You may not be able to see, but it's down there somewhere. So it's just boiling away. Actually, you know what? They are done. Look at that, nice and flaky. The original recipe does say, oh, you're steamed up. Sorry guys, let me just let that unsteam. Uh, to make sure they are flaky. Hello, Carissa. Hey, Annette. Lovely to have you guys on this afternoon. So there you go. That is uh, the potato steams. Now, if you'll give me a moment, I am going to drain them and then we're going to actually mash these potatoes. So give me a second to go over to the sink. Excuse me for a minute and let's get these sorted. Okay, coming back over, just make sure I got rid of all the liquid out. Now I am curious to know how I'm gonna get the blade cover out from underneath all that. Ideally, I'd pour them into my simmering basket. Obviously, I'm a bit relaxed today and I didn't give this enough thought, did I? But what I might do is I might just grab a clean dishcloth and actually grab out that, um, that blade cover from in there. The kids are having water fights out the back. I don't know if you can hear them, but they've got the water pistols out and uh, shooting each other out the back. This is gonna be my dish for my shepherd's pie. So I'm just gonna pour the potatoes in out the way so I can get my hand in there. See the blade cover? In your kitchen, you wouldn't have this drama. You'd just be, you know, pour it out, you'll be right. But uh, yeah, live videos, time is of the essence. Okay, we have a clean bowl. So now what I might do is I might actually switch over to my planner because I've actually put it in my planner for the week. I've gone my week and I've put in both the shepherd's pie actually because it reminded me what I was cooking and what I needed ingredients for, but I've put in the mashed potato for two because I know this one is foolproof. I love it. I am doubling it though. Okay, or actually a little bit. Oh look, it's even saying continue. Let's just start from the beginning, please. There we go. So it says place parmesan in and chop. Little tip, which actually now you need a tablespoon, so you end up with leftovers. Um, just a little tip there. See this one here, it says transfer it and set aside. Yeah. And then it says to, let's keep going. Rinse and dry the mixing bowl. All right, here we go. So normally, insert the blade cover. We've done that. Water. See, so it only says 250 to 300. That's not enough for me. Especially not when the kids, hopefully, like potato. So then let's go through. All right, remove the peeler. Here we go. Rinse the mixing bowl. All right. Now we're putting in, I just want to check what it's doing. No, it's now steaming the potatoes, hang tight. That's why I use the blade cover. All right, here we go. Pinch of salt. What are we doing back here? Place the cooked potatoes. Here we go, bear with me guys. I did give this some thought this afternoon, but you know, it's not going quite to plan. All right, in goes my potatoes. Cooked potatoes, check, in they go. All righty, next. Next is now some, a pinch of salt that we can do. If you're using butter with salt in it, skip the pinch of salt. Okay, you don't need to have both. Then it asks for milk, which is where I'm using my whey. One to two tablespoons. Now, by the way, you can bring your scales up. So one tablespoon is about 20 grams. So we'll go 40 grams. Actually, I'm doubling it, aren't I? Let's go 80 grams. Okay, let's go 93, why not? Should have put a double pinch of salt in too. Uh, one tablespoon of butter, in goes my butter. I might just put all that in. Cultured butter, amazing. 
pinch of ground nutmeg. I'm actually just going to put pepper in. Not a fan of nutmeg, strangely. Okay, one tablespoon of the reserved parmesan. So I'm going to put in two tablespoons. Milled that down earlier. The rest goes in the freezer. Um, so I'm not sure why they get you to mill so much down. But there we go. Mind you, a really good habit is to bring your parmesan block and do it all in or at least half in one go and freeze the other half anyway because you've always then got your grated parmesan. Okay, insert the measuring cup. Here we go. 10 seconds. Off we go on speed four. It's going to mash it for me. It will be done shortly. Okay, next. Now I have more quantity in there. I may well need to repeat that back step. Go back a step and repeat. All right, let's see how we look. We do, because I've got more quantity in there. I just have significantly more quantity. So let's go back up to speed four. It was speed four. And if it goes, and we'll be done in a second. We can watch it now and kind of check how it's going. I'll show you what's happening inside churning in there. It looks a lot like um, like our beautiful sorbets and fruity dreams. Look at that. You see the lumps are nearly all gone and I'm looking for it to be consistent. All right. Now I've given it a lot longer mix than the original recipe calls for. Um, just get you guys there. That actually what I was looking for, and just a little tip for your thermomixing, is you're looking for a consistent mix on the top. If it's got chunks going around, a big ball of stuff going around, it means there's a chunk in there still. You're looking for that vortex where it's very evenly mixed. And now I've got 800 grams of mashed potatoes, beautifully ready for on top of the shepherd's pie tonight. So I will let you guys go. Have a fantastic afternoon. Remember, I'm here to support you to get more out of your Thermomix. So if you've got questions, if you've got concerns, if you need help with a recipe, that's what I'm here for. Now, we do have uh, the end of an offer tomorrow. So Thermomix have had on for a week or so. Uh, when you buy a TM6, it comes with a free hand hug back. It is amazing. Nope, mine's not here. It's usually sitting there next to me. Um, one of the kids has used it to zip something up and we use ours all the time. That's why it's not there. So it is worth $299, it is Volvex, so it is actually the same brand that makes Thermomix. Um, they have a full kitchen set, so you can actually at the moment as well, till tomorrow, uh, till the, it's actually Wednesday morning, I think 11 a.m. is cut off, but you can actually combine the Thermomix and that set and get a massive discount for getting the actual big Thermomix and vacuum cleaner as well. But um, just, you know, for the, a bonus for the Thermomix alone is the hand held back. So it's amazing, $299 for free, that is ending 11 a.m. on Wednesday morning. So if you're thinking about it, it's a great deal. Uh, I don't know what's coming yet. I will hopefully learn tonight at our meeting what is coming up next. Um, if you've ever thought about doing what I do and sharing your love of Thermomix or your love of food with those around you and inspiring and influencing them, let me know. Love what I do. Uh, you get so many freebies along the way, if you know, as long as you put in some effort to it. Um, but like things like even like this apron arrived today from Thermomix. I love it. I've got a cool pen somewhere with a stylus on the end. I don't know where the kids, I think they've already taken off with that. Um, and you know, that's what we get rewarded with by doing what we love, which is pretty cool and pretty generous. So if you've ever thought about it, uh, let me know. I'd love to give you more information and decide if it's right for you or if it's something you want to do down the track and consider it later. But uh, fantastic product company to work with. And these days we can do it Australia wide, which is super cool as well. And on that note of Australia wide, if you need a demo, always love demoing online. Uh, face to face if you're not too far away, but online works just as well these days. So if you want to see what a Thermomix does, if you want to get up close and personal with the TM6, let me know. I'd love to show you what it's all about and answer your individual questions. Or if you've got a Thermomix already, tailor make a demo to you so that you can lift your skills with your Thermomix because there is so much your Thermomix can do to make your life easier. So that's enough talking for me today. I feel very relaxed today. I feel like I've talked a lot. So I do apologize for not being as prompt as I normally am with all this stuff. Um, but have a great one. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going outside and we're using the Ovana and we're going to make some tandoori chicken sticks. 
and we're going to have a go at cooking in the Ovana bays. And I've never done it before. And this is what I love about sharing with you guys. And by the way, the Ovana is something that's going to the mix shop in supposed to be soon sometime. It's supposed to be in there for you guys to buy. There's a pre-sale that will happen soon or it has happened. My dates are a little bit muddly at the moment. I feel like you can register for that now. Um, and yeah, it's another tool that Thermomix have given us as consultants to help you guys with getting more out of your Thermomix, uh, feeling like you've accomplished more. And you know what? Kitchen is the heart of the home. So tomorrow we'll do a bit of a test run cooking those out there in the Ovana. I've made my own tikka masala paste, so I'm gonna coat the tandoori chicken, but I'm gonna coat it with the tikka paste um, and give that a crack and see how that goes. So it could go really well, I could burn it. My attention span's that of a mouse, so goodness knows. <laughs> but I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'll take a photo of the final product for you guys. Do put in the chat if you're watching replay, let me know what you're having for dinner if you know, because you know what, that'll inspire someone else who's going, what on earth am I gonna eat tonight? So let us know what you're making and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon for some cooking outside and I'll give you an update on the gardens as well. There's been lots of progress out there and otherwise see you then. Take care and I'll see you then. Bye guys.